Hello guys, welcome to Gyan IAS. In our channel, we'll be covering entire UPSC and other competitive exam syllabus along with daily current affairs and separate videos on daily mock test. Before we proceed with the video, do hit like and subscribe button which will encourage us to upload new videos on daily basis which covers the entire syllabus. Hello students, welcome to Gyan IAS. Today's lecture is History Part 1. As you know, history, uh, you, we have ancient, medieval as well as modern history. Today, we will be dealing with modern history. Within modern history, <coughs> I will take up this topic, freedom struggle. <coughs> so in today's video, first let me list out what are the topics we are going to cover. First of all, we would see why freedom struggle took place only during the modern history period, mostly during the British. <coughs> and in the second half of today's lecture, we will be looking into what is the most unique about Indian freedom struggle, that is the unique aspects of our freedom struggle. This unique aspects of our freedom struggle is very important. It can be asked as a separate main question. Now, first of all, <coughs> to address the topic, why freedom struggle happened during the modern history period. Now, in our history, if we take, if we take the ancient history period during this time, during the Indus Valley civilization, first the Aryans invaded India, they set up their own civilization. Then various great kingdoms, the Indo-Greeks, the Kushans, Sakas, all these people, they invaded India from an outside world. They came here, they set up their kingdom, ruled India for centuries, but there was no freedom struggle. Because <coughs> there were two main processes which was happening during this phase. First, we can call it as Hinduization. That is, all these <coughs> rulers who came into India had come from a very, very small cultural background. They interacted with a great religion, Hinduism, which had thousands of years of history. Hence, they accepted Hinduism as their religion. They got assimilated into Hinduism. <coughs> Various scholars have said, Hinduism is like an ocean. Thousands of cultures have interacted with it and have got assimilated into it. So one process which was happening was Hinduization. <coughs> the second process, these invaders during the ancient period who came into India, came here and accepted India as their motherland. They came into the country, they came into India with all their belongings. They never looked back at their land. This can be called as Indianization. Hence, due to Hinduization and Indianization, these rulers looked at the indigenous people as their own people and exploitation did not take place. That is the reason during the ancient era, freedom struggle did not happen. Now, let us look at the medieval era when the Muslim kings came into India, set up their kingdoms. Freedom struggle did not happen even during this phase. But do you think Hinduization could have happened during the Muslim rulers? Definitely not. Hinduization did not take place because Islam is a very, very great religion and a great culture which interacted with an other great religion, Hinduism. Both had thousands of years of history. So during the medieval era, Hinduization did not take place. Both Islam and Hinduism lived together through a process of accommodation. But <coughs> these rulers who came into India during the medieval era also came with all their belongings. They never looked back at their land. They accepted India as their mother country. Hence, the process of Indianization took place. Amir Kushro has said that he wants to be reborn in India, even as a dog, it's okay, but not as a human elsewhere. This shows the patriotism which uh, the medieval rulers had. It has produced great rulers like Akbar. 
So, because of this Indianization, there was no freedom struggle even during the medieval era. But come to the modern phase where the European invaders came, the French, the British, the Dutch, all of these people came into India mainly for trading purpose. These people were answerable to their British bosses. Their families still were there in their own country. So they never accepted India as their motherland. Hence, your Indianization did not take place. Neither Hinduization took place because they promoted Christianity through the Christian missionaries. Hence, these invaders came into direct conflict with two major native religions, Islam and Hinduism. Hence, during the modern phase, there was neither Hinduization, neither Indianization, hence exploitation of people began. Therefore, freedom struggle became inevitable during the modern Indian history phase. Now, let us go into the freedom struggle of India. <coughs> so what are the unique aspects? What are the unique aspects of Indian freedom struggle? First unique aspect I would say of Indian freedom struggle, it is the longest anti-colonial freedom struggle. So if I ask you, when did our freedom struggle begin? Most of you would answer, it is 1857. <clears throat> See the revolt of 1857 was not a freedom struggle. It was only a major national movement. If this national movement spreads to the entire country, then it can be called as a freedom struggle. This spreading to the entire country, the feeling that we as a country, uh, we as a country need to drive out these Britishers, this started to spread only after the formation of Indian National Congress in the year 1885. So, our freedom struggle actually begins from 1885. You may say, 1857 revolt is the first war of Indian independence. Yes, 1857 revolt is the first war of Indian independence. But who has quoted this? It is a book written by V.D. Sarvarkar. <coughs> Excuse me. It is the view of V.D. Sarvarkar. There are various pros and cons looking into it, whether it was actually a first war of Indian independence or not. We will look into 1857 revolt in a separate video. So, our freedom struggle beginning from 1885 went on until 1947. It is 62 years. No other country in the world has fought uh, the British for freedom for 62 years. Hence, it is the longest anti-colonial freedom struggle. But if you still go into detail, our struggle actually ended, our freedom struggle, or the freedom movement actually ended in 1942 with the Quit India Movement because after Quit India Movement there was actually no real struggle which happened. It was only a compromise which took place between the Indian National Congress and the Muslim League. So first unique aspect it is the longest <coughs> anti-colonial freedom struggle. Now the second unique aspect we can say it is the largest mass based movement. <clears throat> so this was the largest mass based anti-colonial freedom struggle. Why we can say this is if we divide our freedom struggle into three sections or into three parts. Part 1 between 1885 <clears throat> To 1905. This can be called as the age of moderates. This is when it was led by G.K. Gokhale, M.G. Ranade, W.C. Banerjee, so Surendranath Banerjee, all these people. <coughs> During this first phase, the freedom struggle was restricted only to the uppermost sections of the Indian population. 
that is the elite sections. The second phase, which begins from 1905 onwards, 1905 until 1915, it is called the age of extremists. This is when Lal, Bal, Pal, and Aurobindo go. That is Lal Lajpat Rai, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Bipin Chandra Pal, and Aurobindo Ghosh <coughs> came to the leadership. In the year 1905, they started a movement called Vande Mataram movement, which is also the Swadeshi movement. During this phase, the freedom struggle came to the urban masses. So it occupied the elite, elitist people and the urban masses. Still, the grassroots level was left open. The freedom struggle had not <coughs> trickled down there. But the third phase of, of our freedom struggle starts in 1915 onwards when Mahatma Gandhi came to India. He took our freedom struggle to the grassroots levels, to the village levels, through his moments, Champaran Satyagraha, the Kheda Satyagraha, the Ahmedabad mill workers strike. When during these strikes, he involved entire section of Indian people in the freedom struggle. Therefore, by the first moment Mahatma Gandhi started in the year 1920, non-cooperation movement, the entire section of Indian population were involved in the freedom struggle. Even today, we are the second largest populated country in the country in the world. Therefore, this was our freedom struggle was the largest mass-based freedom struggle in the entire history of mankind. Now, let us look at the third unique aspect of our freedom struggle. The third unique aspect is contradictions. <coughs> During the entire phase of our freedom struggle, we can find there are a lot of contradictions. For example, we speak about secularism. The goal of Indian National Congress was secularism. We are keeping secularism at one side and moving ahead in our freedom struggle. But here crops up the Muslim League in 1905. Later on, Hindu Mahasabha comes. Hence, once Hindu Mahasabha was also formed, extreme communal politics began. So, secularism and communalism going on side by side. <clears throat> if you look at our Indian renaissance also, even before our freedom struggle began, both Arya Samaj as well as Brahma Samaj, both had contradictory approaches which led to the spreading of cultural consciousness as well as political consciousness to the people. <clears throat> if we further look at the most basic element, we started our freedom struggle for achieving freedom to the country. But along with freedom, we got partition, which is again contradictory in nature. Like this, as and when we deal the freedom struggle uh, lectures, you can find out various contradictions in various occasions. Hence, contradictions is another very, very unique aspect. Fourth unique aspect of our freedom struggle is non-violence. <coughs> so, this was the only freedom struggle in the entire history of mankind. First freedom struggle, which used the concept of non-violence to fight against the Britishers. This was what Mahatma Gandhi's most important contribution to towards our freedom struggle. But <coughs> if we say, have we followed freedom, have we followed non-violence in our entire freedom struggle? No, it is not correct. We have only accepted non-violence in principle, but did not follow it because In the year 1920, when Mahatma Gandhi launched the non-cooperation movement, why did he have to call it off on 5th February 1922? Mahatma Gandhi called off non-cooperation movement on 5th February 1922 due to the Chauri Chaura incident, where the followers of Mahatma Gandhi burnt a police station and killed 22 police constables. <coughs> Similarly, in the year 1930, when Mahatma Gandhi launched the civil disobedience movement. During the Sol Chatyagraha, during the Dandi March, we can find instances of violence. And finally, in the year 1942, when Quit India movement was launched, it became the most violent movement in our freedom struggle. Therefore, 
we only accepted nonviolence in principle but did not follow nonviolence. Hence, the most unique aspects we can say of our Indian freedom struggle is it is the longest freedom struggle, it is the largest mass based freedom struggle, contradictory in nature, and nonviolence. Friends, in our next lecture, let us look at the origin of our freedom struggle and what led to the formation of Indian National Congress. Thank you very much. Hello guys, hope you found this video useful. For more videos like this, stay subscribed to our channel. Thank you.